Hello, everyone. We are going to get started. Um, welcome and thank you for joining us. I have a few housekeeping uh, items to go over first. So um, we're going to need a couple of items. And we'll, I'll make sure to give you a little bit of time to get those. But um, again, thank you so much for joining. And I did want to let you know that we've muted everybody upon entry. So um, and, and you can't unmute yourself. Um, and that's just for recording purposes. But um, we would like for you to use the chat feature if you have any questions. And then you can also use the uh, reactions, so the clapping and the hand raise. Uh, but if you have any thumbs up, but if you have any questions, uh, just go ahead and put those in the chat feature and David will respond to them. So the items that you are going to need today are going to be pad of paper, piece of paper, a pen, your cell phone, and a note card or three by five card, just something that you can keep with you. So um, you can take a little bit of time to get those in just a minute, but uh, I wanted to introduce David, our speaker first. Did you know that people that practice an attitude of gratitude have better relationships, feel less aches and pains, Yes, extensive clinical research has shown that individuals that are consistently grateful enjoy a happier existence. David has been studying, speaking about, and living a life of gratitude for over 20 years. He has over a thousand videos on YouTube on the subject of gratitude. He has made over 650 presentations in the last seven years to champion and illustrate the incredible power of living with gratitude. David is an international best-selling author and has written many books on the subject of gratitude, including the Broker's Daily Gratitude Journal and six word lessons to embrace gratitude. So if you want better relationships, better sleep, better physical, mental, and psychological health with fewer aches and pains, then you're going to wanna to pay close attention to what David has to teach us. Please joining me and welcoming from Seattle, Washington, that gratitude guy, David George Brooke. Thank you, Brittany, and welcome everybody to the Gratitude Creates Peak Performance uh, video webinar live Zoom call. I'd like to start off, and Brittany mentioned it too, about some of the things you're going to need, a piece of paper and maybe a small card, the pen, and also your cell phone, but also you need your index finger. And so what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to start off with raising your index finger when I ask you about this, and please hold it up after you will, just so I can see, because we've got everybody muted. But I'd like you to please raise your index finger up and hold it up if you've lost one or both of your parents. And hold your finger up and then keep it up if you would. And then also hold your, your index finger up if you've lost someone close to you to suicide. All right, and then Lastly, please stand up if you've lost somebody close to you to alcohol, drugs, or pills. So let me just scroll through here real quickly and see. A lot of people are on, just some are on by camera and some aren't. Well, the vast majority, thank you, you can put your fingers down now. The vast majority of you have them uh, raised. And the reason I bring this up is because it just shows the percentage of people that have been significantly impacted by loss in their life. And what I'm really here about today to talk about in about 58 or 59 minutes is the impact of gratitude and how gratitude can change your life. It's a phenomenal coping mechanism and we all need coping mechanisms to deal with because there's all these tragedies, there's a lot of life events and things that come up that are very difficult to handle. And it does help you focus on what you have, which is so very important. And that's your blessings and abundance. And what I always say is gratitude turns what you have into enough. So even though you've experienced loss, there's still a lot of things in your life that you have that are are good as well. So just as, bit, as a bit of a backstory, I will tell you about 20 years ago, I lost my wife and she died of a prescription pill overdose. I had two sons that were four and 14 at the time, very, very young. And it really taught me about looking and searching for something that was going to help me get through that. And I happened to find gratitude and it made a really, really big difference. But I also found that it makes a difference in how you look at something. We all know people that are real positive or really negative and they're around you. They either make you feel better. They're your cheerleaders of life or there's the people that are downers. I happen to have a downer for a father. He ended up taking his own life and committed suicide. And so he was one of these people I'd say, good morning, dad. And he'd say, what's good about it? 
So to me, it just depends on how you want to frame your life and how you want to look at it. So I know some of you are on the screen. Some of you are just have your just listening and, and um, not having your screens on, which is fine. But I would like to ask you to do just a brief exercise if you could. And I'm sitting down, but I want everybody to raise their right hand and start turning in a clockwise manner. And if you're standing, that's fine. When I do these live, I have everybody standing up doing it, but do it in a clockwise manner. Now just start bringing it slowly down to where you bring it to your forehead, your eyes, nose, mouth, chest, and just a little below your chest. What direction is it going now? Now, of course, we can't hear anybody because they're muted, but it's now going counterclockwise. Now, how can that be? Brittany, how can that be? I don't know. <laughs> well, the hand never changes, the finger never changes the way the direction it's going, but how you look at it does. And that's why it's so really important to know about how you see something. You see it again, the glass half full, half empty. I love that exercise because I see people in the back and they're going like this and they're going, they're talking to the person next to them like, what, what just happened? Well, it's simply a way to express the idea of how you look at something and makes such a big difference. So first exercise, if you have a piece of paper, get your paper and pencil handy or pen, I should say. And preferably if you have a card, any kind of a three by five card, a note card, maybe a thank you card, something, because you may want to keep this. And here's what I'd like you to do. I call this first exercise right out of the box, the UR card. And this is how you see yourself, or in this case, it's going to be somebody like your mother or your biggest cheerleader, how they see you. So I'm going to give you 60 seconds. And here's what I'd like you to do on that card. And you can do as many as you can in 60 seconds. I want you to write down the five to 10 to 15 characteristics about you that your mother or biggest cheerleader would say describe you. You are energetic, you are happy, you are driven, you are talented. Whatever that biggest cheerleader or your mother and whatever it might be, somebody that's really close to you might say about you, write as many things as you can in 60 seconds, go. And stop, one minute exactly. So I typically do this with two people where we're not spending uh, social distancing and being six feet apart. So I want you to take a look at that list. And this is what, again, your mother or your biggest cheerleader said about you to describe you. And you just wrote them all down. But as you look back to that card, hopefully it's on a card, and you read slowly through each one of those characteristics that they describe you with, I want you to think if you feel better or worse before you wrote that card, seeing how somebody saw all those characteristics of you. And if you feel better on that card, uh, give me a thumbs up in the reactions to the um, Zoom. It's down where it says reactions and you can pick clapping or thumbs up. But if you, see, if you definitely felt better, give me a thumbs up. Thumbs up, thumbs up. Yeah, I see quite a few, excellent. So the question that I always describe people is what gratitude will do. Gratitude helps you focus on what you have as opposed to what you don't have. I'll mention that several times today. But I don't understand why we're so hard on ourselves. It just never makes sense to me. We, have, we say things to ourselves we'd never say to a friend. And I don't get it and I never will get it, but something like that will help you. In a lot of cases, people will hang on to that card because you see how somebody described you, in this case, your mother or your biggest cheerleader, as I mentioned. But it's something I'll never understand. Through my life, I had a lot of ups and downs like most all of us have. But there was a long time in my life I called myself an L-O-S-E-R. And I will not use that word. I will not say it out loud. But I would call myself that all the time. And my two ears would hear what my mouth was saying. Self-talk, bad self-talk, negative self-talk. But when you get into gratitude and you understand you're focusing on everything that you have in your life, you will not have that kind of self-talk. And when you focus on the blessings 
and all the good things that are happening to you, happening to you, it'll make a huge, huge difference. I wrote something down. We are our own worst critics and we hold ourselves to impossible standards and we continue to compare ourselves to other people. Science says the more you choose positive and kind words to describe yourself, your health, your body, and your progress, the less anxiety you will experience. And as I've said too, on understanding in this first module, embracing gratitude, it's all about, again, focusing on what you have and really your blessings, if you will. So again, it depends on the same thing we did that exercise. It does depend on how you look at something. And it's a choice. Every day is a choice. I've argued with people about this all the time. When you get out of bed, you can be happy or sad, up or down, left, right, red, black, whatever it might be, you get to make a choice every day. And when people start out a sentence where you don't understand, I just stop them in their tracks and I go, don't tell me I don't understand because I have a feeling that I'm gonna get an excuse coming from you. So I wanna show you something. So we have, what are we going through right now? We're still in the middle of this coronavirus COVID-19 aspect. And so I think somebody said to me, that, well, listen, Mr. Gratitude Guy, if this is everything so positive, what do we have that's positive when it comes down to COVID-19? And I will just show something to you and hold on a second. Oh, what did I do? Stop, share this one second. I gotta get my, hold on, here we go. Oh, where's my, I can't figure out how to get my thing. <laughs> hold on, I'll get it. Un momento, see you playing. Uh, here we go, okay. So the 10 point gratitude perspective regarding coronavirus. So here's some, somebody said to me, this was early on, the first week or two after this happened. Well, what about the technology? We have all these computers and webinars and Zoom calls online and cell phone. We've got all sorts of texting apps and talk. People are talking about Zoom calls all the time, FaceTime on your computer or on your phone rather. Being healthy, being grateful because we're going to have a virus probably or a virus, uh, a um, vaccine before long and be grateful that you don't have this. The science of today, not only is the vaccine will probably be here soon enough, there's extra time with your family, your spouse, your children, the social connection, appreciating human connection more than ever, family dinner is making a comeback, the personal touch imports, maybe we took that for granted, the face-to-face, -face, people are say they miss the hugs, the handshakes, the eye contact, the smiles, that kind of thing. It's so efficient. I was thinking about, I had a cup of coffee with a friend of mine. I drive about an hour to go have coffee with him. He's done a lot of nice things for me, so I feel I need to drive out to Montlake Terrace. Spend an hour and go back an hour to Issaquah, where I live. That's three hours invested for a one-hour cup of coffee. Met with him the other day by Zoom, saved myself two extra hours. The unbelievable efficiencies around that. The convenience. Who thought you could order groceries and food and all these different things that would be delivered to your doorstep and the person drops it and making sure that they're six feet away. And then community, everybody is in this together. It's maybe, I was saying to Stephanie Hilbert, the, the idea that maybe the world's as together as it's ever been to fight this common foe. So, and then embracing gratitude. One of the biggest things, I think the most important thing on this list is it realigns your priorities. And this is, what, this is when gratitude really shines. You find out what is really important to you and that makes you, what makes you happy. You focus on your blessings and your abundance. And gratitude, as I've said several times, turns what you have into enough. So it makes such a big difference. So take a, take a moment to think about all the things that are positive through all this. This is a very negative situation to, to make a gross understatement, but around all of these things, there's all those things, I just listed 10 things. And if you think about those things and think about the aspect that this is a choice, because so often people make the choice to be negative and then they wonder why they attract negative people around them. So number two, embrace gratitude, number one. Number two, it takes as long as it takes, don't ever give up. It doesn't matter if it's coronavirus. It doesn't matter if it's your life. It doesn't matter if it's tragedy. I've had a lot of tragedy that I've had to deal with, but you know what? You just get up and dust yourself off and get back in the race and so forth. And I realize that for people like me, as a speaker, I started really late in life, about seven or eight years ago. I have these heroes like Colonel Sanders, who started at 63, Ray Kroc from McDonald's, 54, Mary Kay Ash, 58. There's all these people that definitely, definitely, definitely said, I want to find my passion. We're going to talk in a little bit about finding your passion, finding your purpose, and, and find, finding yourself, rather, finding your passion and finding your purpose and having that great connection with yourself is so, so really important. I look at these celebrity deaths that happen. Celebrities get a lot of attention because they're well known and they're in the spotlight. But I look at Robin Williams and, and Anthony Bourdain and Kate Spade and I kind of wonder, we'll talk about a gratitude journal in, in a couple of modules, but I wonder how their lives would be if they had a gratitude journal and they were focusing on what they had. Because it certainly seemed 
that money and power and fame and celebrity all together aren't enough to keep some of these people alive. And so it makes you wonder if they were maybe focusing on those and so forth. One of the things I told, I, I talked to my younger son, Kyle was 14 when Dana passed away and Connor was four. Connor struggled mightily with all going through school and he had to be held back in school. And he still gets mad at me. Why do you tell people under talks? I had to get held back. You shouldn't say that. And I said, well, you know what? It was just the truth of the matter. You suffered a lot when Dana died and so forth. But he went into baseball and he was, he was just trying and trying and trying. He had the hardest time. And I said, you can't ever give up. You can't ever give up. It takes as long as it takes. The same thing I'm preaching today. So he went to do t-ball and he was swinging the bat way above the ball and finally said, no, don't look at me, look lower. And so finally he lowers it and he gets it way too low and he hits the tee and the ball falls off and dribbles forward about three inches. And he looks at me, he goes, dad, I got a hit. And I just went, well, okay, it's not quite how the, the game is played. You're actually supposed to hit the ball, but that's okay. So he kept going, but we went through this long series of years where he never played. He'd go to all the practices, but he never played, and he never got a chance until finally one day on May 31st, 1994, or 2004, rather. And he was, he was the only guy left in the bullpen, and they were on this, he was on this team, and they used all the players. And it was the end of the seventh, the bottom of the seventh, two out, guys on second and third. There's nobody else to bat. And the coach looks down to the dugout and he says, who's left? And the assistant coach goes, Connor. And he goes, Jesus, whatever, send him out. You know, and I said, oh, nice. I'm sitting in the stands, of course, like I had been for all the games. And so he comes out, he's swinging his bat like he's like freaking Ken Griffey. Like he's, he's never even been up, you know. And so I get to the, I get him up to the plate. Then he looks up in the stands and goes, dad, I'm up. And I'm like, oh, man, you don't ever acknowledge your parents? No kid acknowledges their parents in the stands. I'm supposed to be invisible, you know, and so he gets ball one, strike two, ball three. All of a sudden, it's full count. Through two out, bottom of the seventh, they're down seven to six, guys on second and third. He just rips a single into third, into left field, excuse me, pass just inside third base. The guy from third comes around, scores. The guy from second round, third, comes all the way to the plate. Here comes the ball from way out in left field. The catcher catches it. The guy from third, catch, and it was on second, catch it, hits him at the same time. They all crash together, and the ball pops out. And so they win the game eight to seven, and he's sitting out on second base about 200 yards away, and he goes, Dad, I got a hit. And I remember thinking, oh, my God, I couldn't even talk. And when we got home that night, we have a live studio audience here, so there's actually a few laughs around here, which is kind of cool. <laughs> but when we got home that night, I sat him down. I said, you know, it was never, ever about baseball. It's about never giving up. And you didn't give up. And he went on in life to become student of the year, his senior year. And then he went on to become the leadoff hitter on the baseball team at Bothell High School. And it was just such a good example of why you can't give up. As I look at every single individual face, when I look out into the, the crowds, and I'm just not a big fan of PowerPoint, I like to look at all the people and see whether it's on Zoom or whether it's in the audiences out in the convention centers or whatever it might be. And I just want to say every single person has that within them. But one of the biggest things that will help you to get there is by having a gratitude mindset and really focusing on what you have instead of what you don't have. It's so simple to go down the road of focusing on what you don't have. So, and with that in mind, I'm going to jump on to the next thing I want to talk about. Make room for gratitude. Can you change your behavior? Can you change your behavior? What do people say? Again, if I was in live, people would raise their hands. How long do you think it, change, it takes to change some behavior? 28 days, 30 days to do a habit, two weeks, you hear all these different things. Well, I maintain it's that fast. If you could snap your fingers, that's how fast you can change behavior. And I'll give you a good example where I was working at Nordstrom and, and I worked up my way and I got into different positions and got promoted and all that kind of stuff. And that was great. But I remember one day I had my little briefcase and I was in the lunchroom. And then this guy comes up to me and he goes, are you Dave Brooke, the suit manager? And I went, yeah. And he goes, can I tell you what everybody thinks about you around here? And I went, uh, sure. And he goes, everybody thinks that you think you're really hot stuff, just so you know. And this guy was like a maintenance guy. And he said, but let me, let me explain to you why. You walk in here, you never talk to anybody. You never say anything, buddy. You're winning all the contests. You're the number one department. And I later got promoted to different levels at Nordstrom and so forth. I eventually became a store manager. And he's doing, he says, all these things. You never talk to anybody. You should talk to people. You're, just, you're not very friendly. And so I remember thinking, I stuck out my hand and I shook his hand and I said, you know what, Steve's name is Steve Sorey. I'll never forget. And I said, thank you so much for having the guts to tell me that. And I turned around, took my little briefcase, my little shiny shoes, my little starch shirt, and I walked out of the lunchroom and I snapped my fingers and I thought, you're going to be the friendliest guy in this store. 
And just because those escalators go like this, doesn't mean they go any slower when you say hi to people. And I started saying hi, I went down to the cosmetic area, lady shoes, brass plum, didn't matter where it was, men's shoes, active wear, whatever. And I was the friendliest guy, I knew every single person in that store. It completely changed my view and people's, more importantly, people's view of me. What's the message? You can snap your fingers and do it that fast. If you want it today, I'm gonna to talk about a gratitude journal. I have one, the Brooker's Daily Gratitude Journal. I sell a lot of them. You can get this or you can also get a spiral notebook, but I will tell you, if you make a decision, that's how fast you can change. And mm -hmm. I just, I argue with people, no, it takes me time to get a new behavior and so forth. So with that in mind, I wanna talk about these gratitude journals. And this gratitude journal, says the Brooker's Daily Gratitude Journal. This is the centerpiece of what I want to talk about today because it's so difficult to do this without a gratitude journal. You can do it, but this helps so much. And it's simply a journal. Thumbs up, by the way, if you could do this for me, one favor. Thumbs up if you've heard of a gratitude journal before. Just give me the little thumbs up on the reaction. Oh, you're doing live thumbs up too. I like that. <laughs> Thanks for the live thumbs up. That's good. Anyway, the... the Oh, there's a lot of thumbs up. That's excellent. Thank you. Because they are very, very powerful. And I've done this for a long time. And I tell people, if you get this thing, it can change your life. And there's a little saying up in the top here. It says, if you think about it, it's like a dream. If you talk about it, it inspires you. But if you write about it, it empowers you. And it truly does. They've proven already. I've got a keyboard in front of me and there's some little notes here. I can type and all that kind of thing. That's not bad. That's not bad, but there's nothing like writing. I am so grateful for Brittany and MJ being in the live studio audience today to support me and laugh at all my funny stuff, which they haven't laughed that much, but it's a little <laughs> bit, so that's okay. But it doesn't matter what it is. When you write it down, that's when it really plants itself in their brain. They've done studies on that. I'm going to talk about the science of gratitude before we, grow, before we wrap up near the end. And they've proven it over and over again that it does work that way. So... That's how it works, and it's such an important aspect of being grateful. I will tell you, here's, I have my own, which has all my own, oh, this is mine, it has all my entries in it and so forth, and this is on a blank page. I will tell you how this gratitude journal is structured. It starts off with gratitude today, and then it has the day and the date. So today is Wednesday, April 29th, 1998. 1998, that's funny. <laughs> oh, they're laughing now. The studio audience is laughing. That's fantastic. 2020. And then there's the daily number, which is on here. And then it says there's two lines, current events, special occasions. You can bet every day I write in current events, coronavirus, because it's been with us now for seven and a half weeks. And then what you're grateful for, there's about five or six lines here. And then here's the highlight of your day down here, which is typically the best thing that happened to you yesterday, what was the highlight? Because people typically tend to write in the morning. And then on the right-hand side is your gratitude intentions, otherwise known as your gratitude tomorrow. And that's where you are grateful for something that hasn't happened yet, but will happen if you continue to program your subconscious mind, which sits in your prefrontal cortex. So we're not gonna have time to talk about that today, but we are gonna do a little exercise here. So here's what I'd like you to do. There's a chance, just a chance. There's an outside chance. You may want to hold on to this card too, but here's what I want you to do. If you've got one of those cards, if not a piece of paper is fine. And I want you to just think for a second. Now, most of you, I assume, are on your own by yourself. And that's really important because this is just about you kind of creating a daily number for what you are. So I want you to think about what your daily number is at this very moment. Are you guys on top of this? Okay, mm -hmm. just check it. And I want you to think about what this daily number is. 10 is the best day of your life, and one is the worst day of your life. And you can be halves, you can be a seven and a half, but this is kind of like taking your temperature, so to speak. There's a lot of talk about temperature lately, but this is kind of taking your mental temperature. Whatever that number is at the top of your card or your piece of paper, I want you to write that number down. Don't share it with anybody. If you're having a tough day, I don't want you to be embarrassed or share anything, and put a circle around, okay? That's your daily number. So now I'm going to put 60 seconds on the clock again. I'm going to give you 60 seconds to write as many things that you are grateful for in priority order if you can. I'm not going to give you any hints, but if you can only be grateful for one thing, what would it be? Two, three, four. Do as many as you can in 60 seconds. Go.
about 15 seconds. Okay, and stop. And what I would like you to do, this requires being very honest with yourself. Uh, you just took the time to write those things down. It took you 60 seconds to do that. It should take you five or 10, 15 seconds to reread them. I want you to reread them slowly. The number one thing you're grateful for down to as many as you got, five or 10 or 15 or whatever it is. And then after you slowly read those dozen or half a dozen things, I want you to write another number at the bottom of the page or the bottom of the card after reading those five to 10 to 15 things and put that number, could be the same number, could be different, but put that number at the bottom and put a circle around it. Okay, hopefully that's enough time. So now either on your screen or with your little reaction with the thumbs up, I would like you to give me a thumbs up if your number from the top to the bottom stayed the same. You just either do it with your reaction or do it with your actual thumb in your screen. Okay, I'm looking at these, okay. Excellent. Now by the same thing, thumbs up, either on the reaction or on the screen, how many people's number went up from the top to the bottom? Thumbs up, thumbs up, thumbs up, thumbs up, thumbs up, thumbs up, thumbs up. Okay, my talk's done. I've, I've already proven my point. This is phenomenal. <laughs> I have nothing more to say. <laughs> That's always, I never quite, sometimes 90% of the people, their thumbs go, That's the power of gratitude. That was a 60 second exercise. So can you imagine what can happen in five minutes? when you actually are writing in the gratitude journal and it plants it better in your brain, that's how powerful it is. And you may want to convert that, keep that card and use it for a bookmark. If you have a gratitude journal, it'd be great to put it in there. That's how fast that can impact you. So you can imagine, people ask a lot of times, do I write it in my journal in the morning or I write in the evening? It's strictly a, a preference or a choice you make. I prefer to write mine in the morning. I like a little jump start to before my day is, but then I also reread it at night also get a little bit more of an effect. So do me a favor, I like to pull my audience, take this phone number down, 206-371-8309, 206-371-8309. And you just got done doing this exercise, text me, that's my phone, text me the number one thing you are grateful for. What was at the top of your list? Top maybe the one or two items. And I just, I love to get a flavor on who's listing and see. There's groups that I do in churches, that have a different effect than they have ones out in the farmland and different things, but at least this gives me an idea of what uh, people are thinking in terms of that they're most grateful for. Makes a big difference, so thank you for doing that. Okay, now, hopefully you got that down. I'll give you another 10 seconds. What is the number again? 206-371-8309. 206-371-8309. 371-8309, number one thing you're grateful for. Okay, now I wanna add something that, I just want you to promise me you'll do this homework for me. This, I, I would hope you would do this maybe by Friday. And what this is, not now, but I want you to take time in the next two or three days and I want you to write down the 10 most memorable things you've done in your life. Doesn't matter if it's your family, your child, your mother, your father, a trip, it doesn't matter what it is. What are you doing? Don't do it now. What are the 10 most memorable things you've done in your life? And please promise me you'll do that by Friday. That's another, and possibly on one of those cards. That's another card. I did that recently and came up with 100 things. And it was amazing how impactful it was when I thought, I don't think I've done a lot in my life. And I looked at that list and I did 100. I'm just asking for 10. And I was just surprised how good it made me feel by actually going through that. And I will tell you on this journal, I'm a big proponent, like writing it every single day. So here's today, Wednesday, 429. I have coronavirus at the top, so I always make a note of what's going on. I have virtual keynote at CTC and so on. But it always shocks me. I'll be selling my books and journals afterwards, and people come up and they grab it. Is this your journal? Is this your, actually your personal journal? And I go, yeah, yeah. 
and they look through it and they, they can see all my entries and they thumb through it and they go, never fails. Wow. You write in this every day. And you go, you even been listening? <laughs> of course I write in every day. Why would I not write in every day? It makes me feel better. No, I just write in it occasionally. I'm going to sit up in front of you and I'm going to say what you should do, but I'm not going to be the one that's actually going to practice what he preaches. So it just blows my mind. But I will tell you, this has been so powerful for me. I grew up with a mother that had, they called it manic depressive back then. It was bipolar is the term they use now. And I got a little bit of that from her. And it was really a struggle to deal with it. And she did, she eventually died of cancer, but she used to do all sorts of wacky things. And one of the things that she did is that she would call me and she would go, you know what, David? And she put the phone and she'd take her pills and she'd shake her pills by the phone. And she'd go, I have a bottle of sleeping pills. You either come over and see me right now or I'm going to eat all these sleeping pills. And holy, I was like 15 years old. You know, what am I supposed to do? So I'd go over and see her and try to make her feel better and so forth. But I got pieces of that from her. And I had to struggle to battle anything from depression to being down to blue to whatever word you want to describe it with. Well, uh, several years ago, I was doing a talk at the Burlington Chamber of Commerce up north of Mount Vernon and uh, north of uh, Everett. And I woke up that morning and I was a two. So you know how I describe the numbers that you are now, one to 10. So two is not very good, obviously. So I thought, well, you better practice what you preach. So I got the gratitude journal, went out and went to a Starbucks and I wrote the journal, covered everything I was grateful for and it bumped me up to about a four or five. So at least I was better, but I still had this talk to go to. So I drove out to this talk a couple of hundred miles north or whatever it was. I did a talk and afterwards this young lady comes up to me and she says, you just changed my life. And I'd never like heard that before. I mean, I've heard it a lot since, which is extremely humbling and very gratifying, but I'd never heard it before. And she says, I'm going to get two journals for my sons that both need it. And I'm going to get one. And thank you so much. And can I give you a hug? And so I left and I got in my car on my way to drive back from Burlington back to Seattle. And I realized I was now a nine. I'd gone from a two to a four to a five by writing in this. I feel very strongly about that as if you can't tell. And changing somebody's life, I was now a nine or maybe a nine and a half. So I'm a little sensitive to my wife, Dana died of a prescription pill overdose. I've lost friends to suicide. I've lost friends to booze, to all sorts of nasty stuff. And all things that if they had a little different approach on things, maybe things would have been different. But to me, that's why this being grateful is so powerful for you. And you can control the things you control. We can't control whether we get cancer or something like this happens, but we can control a lot of things. And being grateful and having a gratitude journal will make a big difference. So that was how that was impacted to me. And I remember driving back from Burlington today, smiling the whole way home. Of course, stopped to get a Starbucks, but that's what I always had to do. But anyway, next thing I want to talk about. Find yourself, find your passion, find your purpose. I got to keep rocking and rolling here. The most important relationship I contend you'll ever find is the one you have with yourself and the other one you're going to have. Now, when I speak in churches and into religious groups and so forth, I understand the most important with your creator, with God, with Jesus. I totally get that. But somewhere at, at or near the top is the relationship you have with yourself. I, again, think it's the most important thing that you'll ever, you'll ever have happen to you. So I want to give you an example of something about this relationship. If I take this $20 bill and I just put it right through the Zoom call and I ask you if you want to take it, most people, I think, would take it for the most part. So they say, sure, I'll take it. And it's got Andrew Jackson on the front. So if I take do this and I crunch it up like that, and then I smooth it out, and then I go, you want it? See, I'm handing it right through, this, right through the, uh, <laughs> the, the camera. I think most people, MJ, would you take it? Oh, for gosh sakes. They all, see, they always think there's like some, some requirements. No, I just give it to you. It's just like plain. Brittany, would you take it? I would take it. Thank you. Thank you. That's what I like to hear. So, but if I get it on the ground and I stomp on it like this, and then I pull it back out and I smooth it out, would you still take it? I think most people would. So, if I look at Andrew Jackson and I go, Andrew Jackson, you're a piece of crap. You're worthless. You don't amount to much. And frankly, I'm not even sure why you're on this world. Because I think you're absolutely worth zero. Andrew Jackson would look back at me and he'd say, well, you know what, Mr. Speaker Man? <laughs> you can say whatever you want, but I'm still worth 20 bucks. And he would be exactly right. He's still worth 20 bucks. So why is it for you, it's happened to me, I'm not pointing fingers here, why is it you let people crush you, step on you, tell you you're not worthy, 
tell you you're a piece of junk or whatever and get through to your brain. And worst, worst, worst of all, devalue you from 20 to 15 to 10 to five to the worst of all zero and get away with it. Just something to keep in mind. Andrew Jackson will always be worth 20 bucks. You'll always be worth your full value. Don't ever let anybody tell you otherwise. Gee, what's one of the ways we can do that? Keep writing in that gratitude journal and focusing on all those blessings. It'll make a really, really big difference. There, that's for you. <laughs> yeah, you See, MJ, no, MJ no, you didn't no, answer right. No, MJ didn't no, answer no, right. He's like, would you take it? I'm not sure. Well, Brittany goes, sure, I'll take it. So Brittany gets the $20 bill. Yeah. So, but it's such an important thing in how we see ourselves. I was thinking people tend to make it about themselves all the time, whether we realize it or not. The other day, a friend of mine says, did you get your stimulus check? And I'm like, yeah. He goes, oh, that's so, that's so bizarre. I didn't get mine. He goes like for 20 minutes about how he didn't get his stimulus check. And I, I finally raised my hand. Excuse me, weren't you asking me? Weren't we talking about me, about my check? Wasn't that actually what the, the question was? But he has to go on to this big, long thing. So it makes such a big difference. And, and it was like I was down in Reno years ago with this buddy of mine and this, this whole connection we have with ourselves. Why it's so important when you're honest, it, it does import, it's important to be honest is that the entire time we're doing slot machines and having fun, this is, I don't know, 15, 20 years ago. Because I remember he, he starts screaming and he put a quarter in a, in a machine, a slot machine, and all these quarters, he won $1,000. So the quarters are just cascading down and he's going, Brooker, Brooker, come here. And I won 1000 he's doing double fists like this and stuff. And I go and I stand right behind him and the quarters are just cascading down, cascading down and so forth. And so he says, I'm buying dinner. He was $1,000 worth of quarters. You know, but I remember sitting there thinking, I'm so happy for him. I just, I was so happy for him. I'd just be a teeny bit happier if it was me <laughs> that won all the quarters. And I just, I have to be honest. Now, you could be honest or tell me, no, I'm happy for them and that's where it is. I'm just telling you that relationship you have with yourself is so important. That's all about finding you. Find you, this is what I'm talking about. Finding you, find your passion, find your purpose. Finding your passion. I want to be a speaker when I was 19 years old. Took me 47 years or whatever it was till six or seven years ago to get the guts to become a speaker. And I always wanted to do it. I did all these other jobs and things, but it was always in the back of my mind. That's why I said it's never too late. Colonel Sanders and all these guys are my heroes because they started late in life. I started a lot later in life. I don't care. I love what I do and I love spreading this word of gratitude. So whenever you want to start, no time like today. No time like snapping those fingers and making sure you make some changes from yesterday or the day before. So but I remember when I finally got the guts to do it, I was working at a hardware store, a large hardware store in way up in Burlington, or actually in Mount Vernon. And it was December 27th, 2013. And I come home about two in the afternoon. Connor, who was four when Dana passed away, is now 17, and he's sitting on the couch. And I, he looks at me, what are you doing home? And I said, uh, I quit. Said, you quit? And I said, yeah, you quit the hardware store? You, hit the, you quit the big box? And I went, yeah. And he goes, uh, well, what are you going to do now? I said, well, I'm going to be a speaker. And he kind of takes it and he looks at me and he goes, so you know what? Well, that's just super dad. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't even know what to say. I just went, well, I just, it's, something, it's something I always want to do. He goes, well, that's super. I have a question for you. What are we going to do for food? And I think, well... I don't know, maybe this will work out, but I always want to do it, so you have to trust your old dad. But it was a passion of mine. So if you get a great connection with yourself, and that's one of the things when you talk about fighting fear and anxiety, if you have a great connection with yourself, and then you find something you're passionate about it, and then you get to the purpose that you're going to want to probably think maybe why you were here. I remember a friend of mine came up to me once after I'd started the gratitude guide. He writes out, he gets a piece of paper, and he hands me a check, and it's like, a thousand, no, a thousand, it's a million dollars. And he had a lot of money, but I don't think he had a million. But he writes, David Brooke, Michael Hartzell, and so forth. And he gives me the check. He goes, would you take this? I said, sure. I grab the, he holds the check and he says, just a second. You can take this check on one condition. Effective immediately, you have to stop being the gratitude guy. And I, I thought about it for three or four seconds. I said, no. He goes, you found what you're passionate about. So think about that when you're deciding. I don't care how old you are. I'm older than probably the vast majority of people on here. I don't care. This doesn't make any matter. This doesn't make any difference to me because it's never too late to start. You know, there's nothing like what is it? Tomorrow's the first day of the rest of your life. It's never too late to do that kind of thing and to get to the thing you always were thinking about doing and don't have the regrets around it. So I just think it's important though to figure out what you're passionate about. 
What do you want to know you're passionate about? Gee, Dave, I don't know what I'm passionate about. What do you think? Well, if you had a million dollars in your bank account every morning, or you had $20 million in the bank, you couldn't possibly spend it. What would you do? That might give you a clue in terms of what you're supposed to do in life. But I will tell you, it'll lead to your purpose. Get in a great relationship with yourself, getting passionate about what you find you really, you really want to do in this life, and getting a purpose. And I will tell you, if you wonder about how passion and purpose affects people, I will just tell you, Bear Bryant, 69 years old, he retires, he's dead 31, year, 31 days later. Joe Paterno was fired from Penn State for the big affair back there, the big problem with that other Sandusky guy. 74 days later, he's dead. Andy Rooney was 92 and he died 33 days later after he quit. Those are people that had their passion and had their purpose and then it changed and they got away from it. So I just urge you to get a great relationship with yourself, find out what you're passionate for, and more than likely, it'll lead to your purpose. So a couple quick things I wanna tell you about is get a system, set goals, and get your sleep. A system, I don't care what your system is, get one. I don't care if it's writing on your hand, if it's organized by doing this or by doing word blocks on an Excel spreadsheet, whatever it is, whatever your system is, just get one. And I will also mention too that have goals. It's been proven over and over again. It's your roadmap to success. I had the goal to one day be a national champion something. I didn't care what it was. I just wanted to be a national champion something before I left this earth. And my brother buys a hydroplane and I get on the crew and we start working. And I go through all these steps. And eventually I was on the crew. Then I got to drive it in practice and I got to drive it with no other hydroplanes around. Then I got to drive it in the heat with really crummy drivers. And eventually we got to bigger and better and better and better things. And eventually we became national champions. But it was a step-by-step -step process. But it started out with a goal and knowing that. And I was just, there was something about it that I thought it would be so cool to say I was a national champion in something. So it's really important. You might want to write this down. I think it's important. A dream written down with a date becomes a goal. A dream written down with a date becomes a goal. you got to put a date on it. You can't just put it out in the ether somewhere, somewhere in the near future. A dream written down with a date comes a goal, becomes a goal. Number second line, a goal broken down into steps becomes a plan. You got to have the pieces of wood that, that you carry in from the, all the cord of wood that you got. A goal broken down into steps becomes a plan. To try to pick up a whole cord of wood would be impossible, but you can pick it up one piece at a time and take it into your basement or in your garage or whatever. A goal broken down into steps becomes a plan. Lastly, a plan with action taken makes your dreams come true. A plan with action, you got to take action. And I think that's why the gratitude journal, anything else, any of those types of things make a huge, huge difference. So a plan with action makes your dream come true. And then I mentioned sleep. You need your sleep and the story. There's nothing else to talk about. If you wake up at three in the morning, take that card and keep it by your bed that you wrote those 10 or 12 or 15 things you were grateful for. Read it again. Chances are pretty good. You maybe get back to sleep. So all right, enough on that. And one of my oh, last couple of things too I want to talk about before I get into the science of gratitude and see if I can show you that screen share. A lot of the things I get around people in interacting with other people is learning how to listen, remember names, use people's names. I'm telling you over and over again, use people's names, use people's names. It's so important. And if you want to become a big listener, I've got five or six things I could say on here. If you want to remember somebody's names, repeat their name and then use name association. But really the one thing I want to tell you around this, people will love you, is two three word phrases. If you don't know them, they're so powerful. Number one is tell me more. When you're talking to somebody, don't interrupt. Don't cut them off. Don't start asking them, I'm telling you about your stimulus check. Just say, tell me more. And people will go and they'll keep going and go, you'll get your chance. And the other one that's around that is, and, and then what? And then what? Three words. And I will tell you, whether I'm here at CTC or different places, you will have more friends that you know what to do with because you're listening and paying attention to them. So tell me more and then what is really, really important. So I want to tell you about this. See if I can get this this time. Hold on a second. Uh, no, I don't want that one. The science of gratitude. No, don't say it. Hold on. Okay, where is it now? One second. There we go. I'm going to try to read this real fast. I just started talking about this. They're, say, they're proving over and over again what is happening with the science of gratitude, how it affects your physiology. A 2014 study appreciating what we have measurably improve, improves our relationships, our life satisfaction, our health, our sleep. It improves our physical health, leading to fewer aches and pains. You mentioned, you know, I heard that in the bio that Brittany read. Lower blood pressure, less depression, powerful. 
research, gratitude, grateful people are more likely to take care of their health, exercise more often, and schedule regular checkups. 2011 study, gratitude reduces toxic emotions like envy, resentment, frustration, anger, and aggression, and enhances positive emotions like empathy, caring, and sympathy. 2018 study, too much of our time is spent pursuing things we currently don't have. Great line. Gratitude reverses that and realigns our priorities, which I mentioned in the top 10 around COVID about it realigns your priorities to make such a difference, to appreciate what we currently have. So many people are worried about they haven't got the big boat yet, but they haven't thought about the boat they already have. So for goodness sakes, happiness is rarely constant. So although happiness is a fantastic goal, gratitude for the tools that get you there are more important. How easily we can lose sight of everything we have to be thankful for on the, when the circumstances of life become unpleasant, coronavirus. Perfect example. People feel sorry for themselves. Now, the first couple of days, I felt sorry for myself. I lost a bunch of talks that I don't know if I'm going to get back. And then it took me a day or two to kind of get adjusted and think how fortunate I was to the many blessings that I have that other people don't, that can't even pay their rent, don't even have sure they have money for food. So it made a big difference. And lastly, we're our own worst critics and we hold ourselves to impossible standards and we continue continuously compare ourselves to others. Science says that the more you choose positive and kind words to describe yourself, your health, your body, and your progress, the less anxiety you will experience. So that's the science of gratitude and it makes such a big difference. So remember tonight to keep that card by your bedside and use that if you can, because you wake up at three, you read the 10 or 12 things you're most grateful for, I think it'll make a big difference. So last couple of things, and I'm gonna wrap up in about five or six minutes. The People ask me a lot, whether they see me on virtual or they see me on a stage or whatever it might be, uh, how do I get more gratitude in my life? So you've got a piece of paper there so you can write these things down if you want. If you want to get a gratitude journal, you can go to thatgratitudeguy.com, www.thatgratitudeguy.com. You can order one there. I have a special there where if you pay shipping and handling for $7.95, you get it for free. So I'm really anxious to get a lot of gratitude journals out to people. A lot of the soldiers I speak down at Joint Base Lewis McCord, they buy them for the soldiers, which I really appreciate. Here's another one. If you want to get, you can do this right now if you want. If you want to get my Monday morning message, every Monday, a lot of you, I can see some on the calls. I've been flipping through faces here. Get it already. I send out a one-minute video every Monday morning on gratitude. It goes out about 4 or 5 in the morning. Text 428 or text 242828, the word grateful. 42828 is where you text it to, and the word is grateful, G-R-A-T-E-F-U-L, and that'll get you on the email list for that video, and it goes out to a lot of people, and you can imagine the last half a dozen videos I've done have been all around coronavirus and different things. One of them was about that 10-point uh, aspect that I've said in terms of all the things that we can be very grateful for, so the word grateful to 42828. And then lastly, I always meet a lot of people in my talks and things that I that know that I do coaching. And if you're interested in coaching, David at thatgratitudeguy.com. David at thatgratitudeguy.com. You can just email me. I always do a one to two hour complimentary coaching consultation to see what your issues are and if I can help you. So that's something I'm happy, happy to do. So, and then I'll tell you too that um, when I do these and I have the journals, it's, it's interesting around when I sell the books, I sell books I can. I was telling Brittany, how can I get some books and some things? Some, I have some gratitude rocks that say gratitude, which are really cool. So I thought, how can I get those to the people? It's a little tougher virtually when then you're in person. But I remember one day I was, I was selling books and, and the gal comes up and she, she actually wins a book. And I hand her the book and she starts walking away from the stage. And I said, you know, later, if you'd like, I'll sign that for you. And she looks back, she goes, that's okay. <laughs> Great. I don't, I don't think I'm anything special. I'm just trying to get something across here and just a point across about around gratitude. So here's what I want to do. Last thing we're going to do today, sharing gratitude. When you meet people that are excited about something, they're on network marketing, multi-level marketing, you got a new boyfriend, new job, new career, new car, new boat, whatever it is, they're always excited to tell people. People want to share stuff when they get something that they're excited about. Well, what am I excited about? Gratitude and what a difference it can make for you. So here's what I want you to do. I call this the four T's. I'm going to give you 60 seconds on this. So get your cell phones. This is why you need your cell phones. And when well, you needed them for the, actually the, the two uh, the Monday morning minute sign up as well. But here's the thing I want you to do. Text, tweet, tell, or telephone. So most people text. You can call too. I'm going to give you 60 seconds. And I want you to text somebody in your life and tell them how incredibly grateful you are to have them in your life. And use the word grateful, please. 
and do that and I'll give you 60 seconds, go. You can, if you can do more than that, that's fine, but do that for sure, go. Uh, 15 seconds. And stop. And if you're not quite done, that's okay. You can finish it later. I will tell you, I am blessed to speak from junior high schools all the way through to rest homes, senior centers, and so forth. In the senior centers, I give them about five minutes to do the text because it takes some time. And on the junior highs, they've already, what do you talk? I already knocked out 10 texts over here and their little fingers are just flying on this thing. So it's pretty funny. I try to adjust to the type of audience that I have. But when you get to share gratitude, I will tell you there's something about it. And people, people just think, wow, you're thinking of me. You're grateful for me to have you in your life. The same reason some of those things you wrote down in the list of things you are to be grateful for. So in this case, it's people. And that's why I said I want you to use the word grateful in that text. But I will tell you, it is kind of comical sometimes because I'm at the book table and people come up with their phones and they go, look at this. And one of them came up and they said, you know, the answer to the text from I'm grateful for them. I'm grateful for you too. What do you want? And I thought, wow, that's not the idea. You're supposed to be nice about that. And another one, she shows me the thing and it says, you know, are you sure you sent this to the right person? I'm like, <laughs> Holy oh cow. But one that I do remember is I was out at a Bothell Chamber or Bothell uh, Performing Arts Center. So it was a big auditorium where the, the seats went up. And there was, I don't know, maybe five or 600 people there. And so this lady, not far where MJ is sitting about more than six feet away from me, but about 10 feet away. And she's actually talking on the phone. And so she's not texting, she's talking. So she has the phone and I can hear her from the stage. And she goes, hi, honey, I just want to call you. I'm assuming her husband. Uh, honey, I just want to say how grateful I am for you and how much I appreciate you and how much I just love you. And I just am, again, grateful for you. And then she, I don't know. Some speaker just told me to call and tell you this. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> no, it's not my idea. It's your idea. That's the whole idea of this thing. So it's so important. Can you send flowers too much? I don't know. Can you be too grateful for somebody? I don't know. But I will tell you my final thought. I was going to tell you a story, but I'm out of time. We're going to wrap up in one minute. It's one minute to two. If you've been looking for an effective coping mechanism, I started out talking about that at the very beginning an hour ago. I challenge you to try gratitude in a gratitude journal for just one week. If you order mine, that's fantastic. I don't care if you get a spiral notebook. I will tell it will change you so much. It will make a difference in your life. It sure made a difference in my life. I cannot tell you where I would be without gratitude and what has directed me and made me feel I had a real passion from my finding myself to the passion to the purpose. So I will tell you all, give it a try. Thank you all so much. Back to you. Back to you, Brittany. Let me come over here. All right. Thank you all so much. It looks, oh. I was gonna grab your computer. I don't know if we have any questions, um, but if there's any questions, David would be happy to answer those. So we can um, hang out here for just a couple of minutes. Oh, you're getting applause. So, oh, yeah. Yes, great job, yeah. David. Thank you. Um, and if there are no questions, then um, then we will wrap up. But um, just the David at that ready to have a question later. Yes, I included that in the chat. Oh, perfect. Perfect. So um, yes, any questions that you have that, um, that if you don't want to ask here, you're more than welcome to reach out to David. Um, you can also text him too, since you now have his number. <laughs> well, thank you all so so much for joining, and. Um,
I think we're finished. So um, I hope you have a wonderful day. I hope that you uh, think about gratitude throughout the day and are able to improve your day because of an attitude of gratitude. Thank you so much.